What's going on everyone? So I made a video not too long ago giving the history leading up to the original Scream and how Wes Craven almost wasn't the director. We had a completely different Sidney Prescott and Drew Barrymore stepped down to take her role. And it's a great video if you want to learn the history about it. I'll link it down in the description below. But I wanted to sort of talk about the Wes Craven not being a part of Scream in this video because we are essentially getting that with this fifth installment and whatever films going forward. And Wes was so iconic and legendary. I mean, he created so many beloved horror franchises and just was just such a visionary and just so creative and the way he went about these films, particularly Scream and just the, the, the t little techniques and little nuances that really just captured audiences and made us so invested in just the characters and the story and the whodunits, you know, the way he would paint everybody as the bad guy and, or girl and, you know, and you're just like in, in a complete loss of like, who's it going to be? And yes, sometimes it was predictable or it was something that just, you know, you're like, oh, I saw that coming, but it was just the, the buildup and the story overall. And it's just something that I, I feel like deserves a video. And as always, I want to hear from you all. So join the discussion down in the comments below. But before we get into it, be sure to like this video. It helps me out a lot. It lets me know that you enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel, followed by the bell notification so you never miss an upload. And let's get into it. Scream has just been the embodiment of Wes Craven. I mean, the characters he's built, Scream has evolved into essentially the Sydney show, you know, and with Dewey and Gale. And that just shows the, the brilliance that, that Wes has, that he's created these characters that are so beloved to us fans and audiences. And even us just speculating about them dying has, you know, the fan base is divided. You know, a lot of people don't want them dead. A lot of people are like, it's inevitable. It has to happen. It's a horror franchise. I mean, even just like on this channel where we talk about various theories and ideas and discussions and just and just come up with our own little plot twists and stuff is everything Wes envisioned for Scream. It, he would be, cl he's clapping and applauding right now at just the fan base and the community just coming up with their own creations and ideas and expanding on his original, you know, sort of vision for Scream. And it's amazing. And Kevin Williamson, you got to give Kevin Williamson all the credit in the world also. I feel like he's sort of the, the, the one that's left out the most and he's the one that created Scream. You know, Kevin Williamson's story and Wes, you know, vision just became the perfect duo to, to launch this into the stratosphere. And it, it first off would be extremely interesting to see in another universe, another timeline, what Scream would have been without Wes Craven. You know, because right now we look at Wes as, as Scream. We look at the Scream franchises as the, the franchise Wes built. But would we look at it the same way with another sort of director? You know, like, is it, it, it's always a question that I ask with all franchises. You know, you have a character like Sidney, Nev Campbell. You know, you can't vision anybody else as Sydney but Nev Campbell. Is that because she just embodied that character so perfectly and so amazing? Or is it because that was the character that we were introduced to and the direction in which Wes built up that character, we just fell so in love with her that nobody else could ever be Sydney ever? You know, you get what I'm saying? Like, or like if a Drew Barrymore was Sydney Campbell and she didn't step down from the role, or, you know, Reese Witherspoon was supposed to reprise the role. Uh, she was one of the, the leads to take over for Sydney when Drew stepped down. Like, would Drew, Bar or would, uh, yeah, would Drew Barrymore or Reese Witherspoon be the Sydney that we know and love today? I mean, it's an honest question. Like, is it, are these characters so beloved because of what Wes did with them that now we're just so fascinated and fixated on these characters. And same thing with Wes. If another director was behind that chair creating and envisioning Scream, would it be the, the iconic franchise that it is today? Would it be so beloved and on its fifth installment? And the thing that's amazing about it being on its fifth installment is all the hype and excitement behind it. I mean, think about that. How many movies have a fifth installment that people are genuinely thrilled and excited to see? How many people, 
go and hear Scream 5 and think, oh, like, this is it. Like, I can't wait. I'm hi-. I mean, it is hyped. It is a super hype move. They wouldn't even have to do advertising or promotion or anything. And there's so much hype behind this film that it would probably do great at the box office. I mean, honestly. But back to my whole point is we're going to get a, a, a new sort of vision, a new direction with, with Scream. Because we have new directors and we new have new creators. And so we're going to sort of get to see what Scream would be like with somebody else in the chair. Like what kind of movements and what kind of, you know, vision they're going to go. And yes, Wes is going to play a huge part of it, of course. I mean, he laid the groundwork. He laid the, the framework for Scream. So they have sort of the blueprints to build this structure. It's just implementing those things. And... I don't want people to get lost because I, I see I get a lot of comments and stuff from people that are like, you know, like even when, you know, I, I come up with a random theory idea. They're like, Wes wouldn't do that. You know, why? That's that's Wes or even killing the OG three. People are like, you know, what those are Wes's characters. I, and I understand the the hold and the ties and the and the love for Wes and Scream and the characters. But again, these aren't this isn't Wes. And I don't want them which i'm sure they know i don't want them to try to be and emulate wes because it's not going to be a good film i'm telling you they're not wes craven so for them to try to emulate and recreate what wes has done it's not going to happen that's that's the whole point like wes is is scream he's the one that we we associate scream as again the the house that wes built and in and, and, and order to continue that legacy, yes, use the framework, use the groundwork that was established, but you need to create your own screen. They, they can't be too focused on, well, what would Wes do? Would Wes do this? I think Wes would do that. Like Wes, uh, you know, you start losing your vision and you start losing your creativity and you start losing your, your characters and your story plots by trying to be Wes Craven. You're not going to be Wes Craven. He is arguably the greatest horror director ever. Like, these people are, are great directors and great producers in their own right. I mean, Ready or Not was a great film. They have other great films. And they they know what they want to do. They have their vision. I mean, it's going to be a great film just because the OG3 signed on. They said, no, absolutely not. We want nothing to do with this. And then once these producers reached out to them and showed them what they planned, they jumped on board. And they're ecstatic. I mean, you see interviews and stuff. When they're talking, they're talking about how great this this new film and this new installment is and how it does Wes's legacy great you can uphold Wes's legacy without having to keep everything and everyone that Wes has ever created and still do him justice still continue his legacy by giving us a great scream film by upholding the standard that is scream I mean even Wes had plans to kill off all three in pretty much every film. In Scream 2, Cotton was supposed to get Sydney. Scream 3, Sydney was supposed to die and, and, and the big battle. In Scream 4, Jill was basically supposed to get away with it. So Wes even had visions to kill off these guys. But they wanted to keep doing films. I mean, even Dewey. Dewey was originally supposed to die. They added on his scene in the end because... People loved him so much in test screenings. So they're like, oh, let's just keep him in. Same thing with Randy. That's why Randy came on board. Randy was supposed to be the hero. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it, things change and evolve. The original idea of Scream, yes, obviously evolved because they wanted to keep making new films. And they had these characters that people fell in love with and were established. So they wanted to keep implementing them. The problem is that we are so obsessed with these characters, which is good. I mean, that's that's the whole point, right? The whole point is to be obsessed with these characters and be so in love with the idea of these characters. But the problem is you can't lose sight of Scream. Scream is Scream. Scream is a, its own franchise. It's not called Sydney. It's not called the OG3. It's called Scream. And in order for them to produce these new characters, they have to move off of them in some way. Whether you kill them, whether you write them out, whatever. But at some point, they're going to have to go. This is a horror film. Everybody dies. Every, you know, final girl in a franchise dies at some point. And, you know, people have said, like, oh, what about Lori? Like, 
yeah, she died in resurrection, and then they retcon that to bring her back. So even she died, you know? And that's my thing. And it'll be interesting to see sort of the the direction and, and legacy continued through Wes's groundwork. I'm, I'm really curious to see. And I have so much hype and hope for this film. I hope it's not too much, because I want to go in this film, you know, clean slated, give it an honest chance, because um, I don't want to get lost in all the hype and hoopla. But... I, I am. I'm just so like excited and thrilled for this upcoming, you know, Scream, and it, it'll be interesting because we'll finally get to see what Scream will be without Wes, and and it's it's not a bad thing. Like you know, a, a lot of people say you know, it's like I'm worried about this film. Like why? Like give it a chance. You got to give it a chance. You can't immediately go in there and be like, this isn't a West film, so it's going to be terrible. Like, because then no matter how good the film is, you're going to have some bias. You're going to have some, you know, resentment towards this film, and it's not going to be the quality film you want it to be. It, all I want is a great film that establishes great characters and tells a great story and upholds that framework and that standard that Wes built. You know, it's the question to resort back to the beginning. It's the question that I've always wondered is that, if Wes wasn't the original director, because he said no, he said, I don't want to do this, I'm done. What would Scream have been? Is, would have Scream have been the iconic franchise that it is today? Would we be so in love with the characters that we are in love with now if Wes wasn't at the helm? It's, it's something that I've always thought and I've always wondered. And now we're actually going to get to see this all play out. But as always, this is a discussion and I want to hear from you. So let me know down in the comments. Like, do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? Uh, if you have any points that you want to add, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you all, as always. If you haven't yet liked this video, it helps me out a lot. Let me know that you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel, followed by the bell notification, so you never miss an upload. See you next time.